What is up y'all? This is Alex from Alex PC Tech back at you with another video and on this video we're gonna be discussing how to choose a power supply. Now when building a system unit one of the last steps is choosing your power supply. So the purpose of the power supply is to convert the AC or alternating current that is coming from the wall to DC or direct current that will be used by your computer components. It is imperative that you don't skimp on this part because choosing the wrong power supply might introduce you to system irregularities such as frequent system crashes, bugs, the blue screen of death, and at worst, your power supply might take down another PC component with it. So we will be splitting this video in six parts for you to better understand and choose your next power supply wisely. So all PCs run on electricity and it is the job of the power supply to deliver proper voltages to each component. So let's address one of the biggest questions that you will encounter when choosing your power supply and that is which or what wattage should I need or do I need for my build. In determining how many wattages, there are several ways but one is that if you are building a system unit for home use that you will, be, you will be running Microsoft Office or you will be using it for home study, then this system unit will not require any GPU. Probably you will only use the built-in graphics card of the motherboard or the processor depending on which platform you are choosing. Then you can easily get away with around 300 to 400 watts of power supply. Not only that, other built systems can even get away with 200 watts of power supply built onto the system. If you are going to buy a GPU and you are going to do the typical setup of one CPU, one GPU, a couple of RAM sticks, and a hard disk drive, then I would suggest that you go to your GPU's manufacturer site and check what is the recommended power supply for that GPU? Like in my case, for my current build, I chose the 1660 Ti as my current video card and it is recommending a 450 watt power supply. But in my case, I bought a 600 watt power supply for efficiency purposes and for upgrade options in the future because I'm planning to do some upgrades in the future and I have efficient and there is what you call efficiency in power supply. We will be discussing the upgrade considerations and also the efficiency of the power supply later on this video. Now another way where you can check how many watts you need for your system unit is by going to the internet and going to some websites that provides tools for you to calculate how many watts you need for your system unit. Be it one is Seasonic's power wattage calculator and another one is Newegg's power wattage calculator where you can input your CPU, your GPU, your memory and other peripherals and it will automatically compute the required wattage that you need for your PSU. Now earlier we talked about upgrade considerations. If you are planning to do an SLI slash crosshair setup or if you are planning to do a custom loop or install additional fans or hard drives, then it is advisable for you to buy a bigger capacity power supply for you to cater your future needs. Now one thing to consider in choosing your wattage is continuous power and peak power. Now, these are two interchangeable terms that you should not change because continuous power refers to the maximum power that your power supply can provide. Another is peak power is the maximum surge of power that your power supply can provide. Now, the thing to note here is that you should always refer to the continuous power because this is what your PC will need in order to run it at full load. Now, about efficiency you will see that some or most of the power supplies have a label 80 plus or 80 plus bronze, 80 plus silver, gold, titanium, platinum, or some are rated as true rated as they say. Now, you should stay away from the true rated labeled power supplies as there is no such thing as 
true rated that is just a marketing scheme that they use for you to buy the power supply but you should stay away from that now going back to the certified power supplies the 80 plus certification is what manufacturers use to certify that their power supply meets certain criteria or standards for it to be said efficient because efficiency is lost due to heat resistance and other physical factors or physics that we will not discuss in this video. The 80% plus certification also means that your power supply will be efficient 80% all of the time. But there is more efficiency that we can have based on how much, how much load your power supply has. For example, in my case, my 600 watt power supply is at its most efficient based on the manufacturer's graph of efficiency it is at most efficient at 50 percent load or usage now in my case my pc requires at least 300 to 400 watts to to run so i'm probably in the threshold of 50 percent or 50 percent more now why do you want an efficient power supply one is that an efficient power supply can save you a lot of money in the long run. Two, an efficient power supply is created with high quality parts and thus these quali high quality parts dissipate heat more than cheap parts. So that is one guarantee that your power supply will be reliable because of less heat. It will be more quiet because the fan on the power supply will run less or it will not run at full speed because of the efficiency of the parts and also this guarantees that your power supply will last long because there is less heat now we all know that heat is the enemy of electrical components if you are still here then thank you for listening at this juncture i would like to speak about rails now what are rails rails is what our power supply use in order to distribute amperes to our components basically we need to focus our attention on one rail and that is the 12 volt rail because this is what our power supply uses in order to distribute amperes to our most power hungry components which are the cpu and the gpu a modern power supply should be able to at least give 18 amperes to a system unit and more than 24 amperes if your system has a one gpu setup and at least but not less 34 amperes more if you are going for a multiple sli or crossfire setup another thing to know about rails is that there are power supplies that have multiple or single rails now the only difference is that a multiple rail power supply has multiple 12 volt rails that may or can be dedicated to specific components. So you should be able to check your manufacturers or your power supply manual if you are going to buy a multiple rail power supply. One benefit or having a multiple rail power supply is that in case the safety features of your power supply fails, which is highly unlikely right now nowadays, if in case it fails, then only one 12 volt rail will be fried whereas if you are using a single rail power supply and the safety features for example the short circuit safety feature fails then the entire 12 volt rail will be fried next is form factor now form factor is also a thing to consider when buying your power supply be it the most common is the atx 12 v this is the most common power supply that we can find in the market for gaming or the standard desktop setup. Next is the EPS-12V. This is, let's just say that it is a server standard power supply, but you can also use this in desktop applications if your motherboard is compatible. The next list will feature all of the small form factor PSUs that we can find in the market next is about the connectors of all the connectors that are present in a power supply you should be weary of two connectors one is the 24 pin or the 20 pin for the motherboard another is the cpu power connector which is the 4 pin or 8 pin depending on the model of your power supply 
Now, how will you judge which one you will buy? Depends on your motherboard. It depends on your motherboard. If your motherboard is the ATX standard nowadays, which has the 8-pin CPU power connector, 8-pin EPS CPU power connector, and the 24-pin motherboard connector, then you should be able to choose which power supply has those connectors. Now, the main difference between the previous form factors, the ATX12V and the EPS12V, is the CPU power connector. The earlier versions of the ATX V12 uh, power supply form factor has a 4-pin connector for the CPU power connector, whereas the EPS12V power connector, the server standard, has the 8-pin EPS power connector. But now, most of the motherboards adhere to the 8-pin EPS 12V connector as the standard. When it comes to proper cable management and making your build look clean and sleek, then the power supply has a major role in doing so. There are three types of cable management for each power supply. One is hard line or non-modular. Two is fully modular. And the third one is semi-modular. Now, let's start with the first one, the hard line or the non-modular. This simply means that all of the wires are attached to the power supply. This means that the cables that you will not need will be tucked somewhere in your case and the others will just be too long or too short depending on the location of your components. For the other one, the fully modular, the problem with the fully modular is that all the cables are detachable. Yes, all the cables can be customized to fit your needs on how, what distance or how long your components will be. But it introduces more resistance and also it introduces more cost. It is way more costly to have a fully modular power supply than to have a hardline power supply. Next is a compromise of the both. We have the semi-modular, the one that I am using right now. It is a compromise between the modular and the non-modular power supply. For my version of the power supply, the hard line is the 24-pin power supply going to the motherboard. And the other one is the power supply for the SATA hard drive. I don't know why it's the SATA hard drive, but that's how my power supply is. The modular cables are for the PCIe GPU. So it's a compromise between the two without costing too much. That is it on this how to choose your power supply video. Let us know how you choose your power supply. Do you refer to the internet or do you refer to the shop where you buy your PC or do you do your own research? Hit us in the comments down below. If you have learned anything from this video at all, please share it to someone who you think needs this information with them. Like if you like this video, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet to our channel and see you on the next one.